Hello there. My name is Scott. I'm one of the coaches of FTC Team 9779, the Pie Eaters. Um, and I thought we'd do a little video here to help you get Android Studio up and running. Some tips and tricks we've learned here and there, um, getting that installed. So if you're new to Android Studio and new to programming Android Studio, this will at least help you get the app installed. Um, hopefully we'll get some videos up on some programming um, concepts and ideas, beginner programming, things like that to help you get your robot driving as well. Um, so the first thing I would say is probably the most helpful thing is to get out on the internet. I'll close that, okay. And we're going to go out to, actually I have it open, but that doesn't, okay, here we go. Um, www.firstinspires, oops, inspires, it's right there, .org. If you haven't been there, definitely go to firstinspires.org. Um, we're going to get the PushBot build guide if you don't have it yet. Um, one thing I noticed, well, my son noticed, is if you have this small and we go under here under programs, it immediately opens up First Lego League Junior and you can't get to FTC no matter what you do. So if you're having that problem, we just make sure our screen is maximized. And now under programs, you can see we have the choice of First Tech Challenge. Um, great information out here for First Tech Challenge. You can browse all this stuff. Just great, great information. For us, we're looking for four teams. This is where we can find the PushBot build guide, which actually walks us through the entire process of getting your robot running. So out here on four teams, you have a lot, again, a lot of stuff to explore. Get out there, explore it. We are looking for what? We are looking for robot building resources right here. Boom. Okay. This should take us to a page that has, again, more great information. So you can spend a lot of time out here getting some great information from firstinspires.org. Um, we were looking for the PushBot build guide. We have that right here, the PDF version or the zip version. So you can zip, unzip it on your computer and have it available whenever you need it. Um, we're going to just look at it online here. It's going to open right up in our browser. Now, if you look, the first however many pages as we get into this thing are actually how to build this robot here, the push bot. Okay? Um, we're going to skip forward. I think it was around, I was just looking at it, around page 52. There we go. Yep. Yeah. So at, um, this is the last couple of instructions for how to build the push bot. Then you get into page 52, programming the robot. This obviously could change, but this will at least get you started. Um, and this is going to walk you through the entire process. If you get stuck, have any issues, this is where you want to go. It'll answer everything. It's very detailed. So we're just going to kind of breeze through a lot of this. This is just making sure you have the system required. Um, your computer can handle it. If you have the right version of Windows, enough space to install it, enough RAM, all of those things. It'll walk you through all of that stuff that you need to know there. We are going to look through here to GitHub. Here we go. Um, yeah. So for me, it's page 62, again, could have changed. And we have installing the FTC SDK. So the SDK is a software development kit, um, and it's the FTC version of that. And this is the set of code that builds the robot controller app that will run on your phone. And they give us the ability to modify that, and they put included a lot of tools for us in there. It's the FTC. SDK, Software Development Kit. Um, they give us a link to get there like this, but if you don't have this document open and you want to get there, I'm just going to open another window here on the internet. I'm going to search for GitHub, G-I-T-H-U-B, and I'm going to search for FTC app. Boom. And here we go. The first one that comes up is that exact same link that they had in their PushBot build guide, okay? So you can just get to it this way, and it will bring you to the latest version of the FTC app, or the FTC SDK. I hate to keep throwing these words at you, Software Development Kit. Um, and you can see this is the 16.0.2.0.9 release, which is the most recent one. This was released February 9th, 2016. That's where that comes, for. Um, comes from, sorry. Um, anyway, so this is the one you want to get. You come up here to clone or download, 
and you're going to want to download the zip file. That's the compressed file that contains all of this stuff over here. Okay. Um, again, a lot of information. I'll go back to the Pushbot build guide on how to do that, how to unzip it, et cetera, et cetera. They have it. If we go on down far enough, they'll take you into how to unzip it, where to put it. They put theirs right on the C drive. It shows you how to do all that, but you might already know how to do all that. We're going to skip through it. So they installed theirs right here on the Windows C drive, um, FTC App Master. You can see the folder. It's unzipped right there. Okay. Um, we, I'll just show you, my son, this is his computer here. Um, he installed it in his documents folder. Let's see, documents, Java stuff, uh, FTC, and there's his right there, and he even renamed it. So all those files you'll see are in, boom, right inside his FTC app master folder. There's the file structure that gets us there. So everything's right in there if we need it. So you don't have to put it there. Put it somewhere. It's going to live there kind of forever. So don't just uninstall it in your downloads folder. Don't install it onto your desktop. If that's not where you want to look at it forever, put it in a folder. And like we were saying, the magic document out here, the Pushbot build guide, will teach you how to put it on the C drive if you don't already know how to do that. Boy, that was long-winded. Sorry. Okay, next up, we're going to install the Java Development Kit. JDK. So we have more words. This is a Java development kit. These are the, I've also heard it referred to as the Java developers kit, um, meaning that a programmer uses this kit of tools to build programs. So anybody that programs in Java is probably going to use the Java developers kit. We are now Java programmers, um, so we are going to use this kit of tools. Um, lucky for us, most of it's the work that has to call on this kit is done for us using the one we just downloaded, the FTC kit of tools. Um, so it's going to draw heavily upon this Java development kit. Okay, So now we're going to download that. Um, this will steer you to the version 7 of that. Um, I am going to do the same trick we just did. Go on the internet here and search for Java. JDK, that's the Java Development Kit, and we want to download it. So Java JDK download, and that's going to take us right here, and we're going to get number eight. Like I said, the magic document tells you to get kit seven, but um, kit eight is more updated. Okay, so once we get to the Java site here, we can scroll down. Uh, if I can get it to scroll down, there we go. And they have version 8U91, 8U92. Let's just get the latest one, 8U92. If you keep scrolling down, these are just uh, extra files that we don't need to worry about. But these first two are the latest two versions. So we'll get 8U92. That's the newest one as of making this video. And you can see no matter what operating system you have, you'll probably be able to find a version of the Java Development Kit. Um, if you have Windows, it's very straightforward. I mean Mac, sorry. It's very straightforward for Mac, Mac OS X. You just download that and run it. Um, Windows, we have to make sure that we're getting the right version. We have an x86 and an x64 version. Um, the Pushbot build guide will walk you through, actually it was before all of this, earlier in the document. It shows you how to determine which version you have, but what we'll do is we'll come down here and we'll say, um, they, their version said to type settings, PC settings. That doesn't seem to work for me, so I'm just going to say about. And right up here it said about your PC, right? So we click on that, and it's going to open up and tell us some basic settings about the computer we're using. What you're looking for is the system type right here, okay? We're using a 64-bit operating system, which uses x64, okay? Um, that's probably the most common nowadays is x64. If you're using a 32-bit operating system, this will actually probably be x86, which makes no sense to me. But 64-bit um, operating system is x64. The other option is the 32-bit. Okay, um, And if we go to these kits, you'll see that we can download either the x86 version or the x64. Right, So we're x8, x64, and we would download this one. So you just click it, you download it, you run it, it will install those kit of tools um, exactly where they need to be installed. Just follow all the defaults. Again, if you need help with that at all, 
this push bot build guide has everything you'll need to know. All right, so now we've got we've downloaded the um, FTC app uh, SDK. Remember, step one. Step two, we downloaded Java, the latest version of the Java development kit. Um, we've got that installed. So all that's left now is to get Android Studio. So this is walking us all through getting Java development kit installed and making sure that you have the version installed, that it's all working. Again, if it's messed up for any reason, that's your chance where it will show you how to fix it all. And let's get Android Studio. The Pushbot Guide, let's see, this starts somewhere around page 79 of the Pushbot Guide. Um, we're going to do the same thing we've been doing, which we're going to just type uh, Android Studio Download. And it comes right up with download Android Studio, developer.android.com studio. Um, we click that. And there it is. Um, now the cool thing here is, is it will, if you have a Mac, it's going to bring up the Mac button here. It should say for Mac. And since we have a Windows computer, it's going to say for Windows. So um, this is pretty straightforward. You just uh, click the button, download it, run it, and install it. It's pretty it's a straightforward install. If you get stuck, again, the build guide, all of these pages are showing you how to basically accept the licensing terms and all of this stuff and install it. It's, it's, pretty, it's straightforward. Just accept everything as it comes up unless you're an advanced user, which I am not. Um, and it takes, it takes a long time because there's some downloading that has to go on um, of more tools and things like that that are specific to Android devices that it will download for you. Um, and then eventually you'll get to open that's right in here. There we go. Um, you get to open Android Studio. Now we get up to page 91. I am going to open Android Studio. It might take a little bit. I should have. So we'll just cut to the point where it opens. Now, so this is what's going to come up. You probably won't have this if it's your first time running. That's the App Master. But um, this is the screen that should come up. And you'll there's the document says to open an existing Android Studio project. The advice I have heard is that you want to import the project, Eclipse, Gradle, etc. Um, we click that, and this window comes up, and we just steer it to that point where in step one, remember I said that we install ours on documents, Java stuff, uh, FTC. This is where my son stuck everything. FTC App Master, May 29th, 2016. And the file that we found works really good to import this one called build.gradle that you'll see right there in your FTC app master folder build.gradle you'll click that you'll say okay and it should go through a long process of building that file all those files into an app for you okay so that should just take a lot of time of building maybe downloading some stuff um, and then a couple interesting things might happen okay when it's open, we have to come over here and we have to, this, the, these are just different tabs we can open. We typically work in project, which is over here. Okay. Um, and then if we have something open, like I'll just show you real quick, the FTC robot controller should now come up here. If you didn't have too many errors, things like that, the errors should be shown to you. Ignore that little thing down there. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, the, it, it, if there's errors, uh, a screen comes up down here. If I can remember how to get it up, I'll show you. Something like this, but there would be, that's not the right one, but maybe over here, the event log. Yeah, something like this would come up and it would have errors logged here and stuff. And usually you can click um, download the latest this, download the latest that, um, things like that. It'll tell you what's wrong. You Typically, it has the fix built in. Again, follow the build guide. It should have anything you need to know about that or maybe comment down in the comments section we'll try to help you out but um, eventually yeah this is how you get this stuff open now the FTC robot controller if we click this little arrow next to it it opens up the folders that um, are underneath there we can go under Java and this will probably open up automatically now op modes okay this little folder right here called op modes this is where you're gonna do pretty much all of your work you never have to work anywhere other than op mode. Now since we've been talking about push bot, we'll come down here, scroll down. These are all the different op modes. We'll tell you more about those later in a different video. But you can see here's some push bot op modes. 
if we wanted to open one of these, we could just say double click it and there's the code comes up in this screen over on the right. And this is Android Studio up and running. Um, another important thing you're going to need to do before it will load the document properly, okay, when you do have some of those errors we talked about earlier, see this little guy up here, he's got a little um, arrow on him, he's a little Android guy, it's the SDK, SDK Manager, okay. We're going to click on him and it opens this thing up, okay. We are going to, this is kind of a part that's a little bit new in the newer version of Android Studio is we are now going to launch the standalone manager. Okay, These items in these folders that we're looking at now are basically things to do with what version of the an Android operating system on a phone or tablet that we're going to deal with. Okay, um, For FTC, again once we, when we made this video, um, 19 and 21 seem to be the important versions of this. Okay, so um, the files you're really going to need here, okay, once this standalone manager comes up, click deselect all because we don't want, it just saves a lot of headaches of things getting installed and uninstalled that we don't need to deal with. The files you really want to make sure that are installed, you can see on the right here it tells you whether they're installed or not. I'm just going to open this up a little bit, maybe. That's good enough, I guess. Okay, tells you whether they're installed or not installed. Um, the things you really need to make sure you have, these should be there automatically, the very first ones. Um, we need the build tools. We need the build tools. These numbers in here have to do with which version of the Android operating system is running on the device that we want to use. In our case, um, in FTC, the year I made this, we were using Android version, I think it's 4.4, which corresponds to what they call API 19, and again, they recommend 21 as well, okay? So we want this build tools for 21, build tools for 19. Those are very important. Um, and then if you scroll down, we can pass up 23, 22. Um, we open up 21, okay? And the magic document will tell you to select this square here, which will select all of these. Um, if you do that for 21 and 19, which is down here, you'll end up with about 20 gigabytes of material on your hard drive. It's a ridiculous amount of space. It wouldn't fit on this computer. So we have learned through some help um, from some of our gurus in the Central Florida Tesla area that we can just install the SDK platform and the Google APIs for API 21, okay, so that you see those two files. And then also API 19, we're going to get the SDK platform and the Google APIs as well for those, those two. So once you get those selected, it would say install packages down here. You click that, it will download them and install them. Um, somebody once told me that he needed this x86 system image here. I, it, ours seems to work fine without it, um, as long as we have these Google APIs. But um, I guess that would be your next one to go to if for some reason that's not working or if it's requesting it. But you install the packages, downloads all of these things, um, and then once it's done, if you close all this out, you close this guy out, um, it should rebuild your project with the new APIs that you've installed, and it should clear up any errors that you had. Um, if there's still errors, again, if it tells you here something that you can click on to fix the problem, do that. Um, sometimes up in this top right hand corner, it might say that a new update's available. Those updates will usually fix things. Um, and that's the best way to handle it. And if you have any other problems, leave us a comment. This should get you up and running. Uh, keep an eye out for our beginner programming. If you're just getting started with Java and trying to learn how all this stuff goes together to make a robot run, look for that video. Again, if you have any questions, we'll try to answer them in the comments. Um, good luck. Have fun.